So when you're in my business, you spend a lot of time talking about stages of team development. And yet, you don't always get to cover everything that you want to. And so what we've decided to do is just take each of the stages of team development and do a short video lesson on each and every one of them. Then we'll do a wrap up. So this one is about forming. Points? Well, the first one is that polite really can be productive. Second, you ought to be clear about what they want. And third, be very clear about what the project needs. Now, giving you a few practical points, some additional context that can be put to work for you immediately. So if you like this approach, please like or subscribe. Now, let me just expand on the first point. When people are being polite, it doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't comfortable enough with each other to get some productive discussions going. Think of it as being on your best behavior, you know, your company behavior. People are sort of sizing up the situation and getting a sense of how the team is going to mesh which means it's a really good time to start having conversations about rules of engagement. You know, before anybody violates one, <laughs> but it also gives it you a chance to get the whole group of people together talking about something that matters to all of them, regardless of what their role is gonna be on the team. Because you know what? People want to know how this is gonna affect them. This project probably isn't going to take anything out of their workload. It's going to add something. So what's the impact of this going to be on their schedule? What's the impact going to be on their workload? And is there any potential for this project to maybe, you know, shine up their professional reputation? It's a prime opportunity to start having those conversations about the strategic tie-in to the organization's larger objectives. You know, usually when a group of people first come together, they're, they're kind of ready to be a little bit more positive about the project. And they're mostly focused on what this is going to mean to or for them. That means you can start connecting their day-to-day -day work with the work that is going to achieve the objective of the project and the client sponsor, not to mention tying it into the larger objective of the organization. This means that you also want to make sure that you understand what their other project workloads are, because prioritization isn't always done beautifully but it can be done productively. And by you understanding what their additional project workload already is, you can have a sense of where your project is gonna fall in the prioritization line. So be very, very clear about how that works. You know, during these, this stage of team development, you're gonna hear some pretty candid information about how people feel about the organization, this project, um, things that they see already might stand in the way of success. Well, this is kind of illuminating because it gives you not only a little bit of a hint about each of their personal levels of risk awareness, but it also can give you a sense of whether they lean more to optimism or, you know, pessimism. <laughs> Look, this is when the group can start becoming a team. So keep the focus on the how and why this project benefits each of them, as well as all of them collectively. Look for points where communications might need to be shored up and start to look for that person who could take your place either permanently or if you're not going to be immediately available. Now, of course, they're going to leave forming and head into storming. That's a good thing. Really, it is a good thing because each and every stage of team development serves a purpose. 
And you as a project leader are going to have the opportunity to make sure that that purpose is realized for the benefit of the entire team. I'm Kimihiro Tsuzimski, and this video is brought to you by Leadership Driven Project Management Academy. Thanks for joining us.